I could pay $240 to monitor one hive's temperature and humidity or $30. I opted for the $30. I'm going to show you how to do a $240 job for $30 and make sure that your bees are nice and healthy, warm and cozy in winter. This is David Gilmore known as LDS Prepper and I watch over 600 videos on preparedness like uh, honeybee raising, living off grid, solar backup, battery backup, water purification, growing food as if your life depends on it, hardening your home against assault, self-defense and emergency communications, go to ldsprepper.com. I have these three hives here. They're doing great. They're loaded with honey and they're ready to go in winter, but I want to monitor them and make sure that they're uh, nice and healthy. So I could get the bee minder set up, which you may want to do, which is a great setup, but they're $80 per sensor. I have a lower, middle, and upper brood box here. So that would be three $80 sensors per hive. That gets pretty expensive. And I probably will end up with five hives next year. So I'd rather spend $10 per box than $80 per box. And when I say box, there's uh, three boxes or, or brood boxes on each hive. So what am I doing? I'm gonna be using the little $10 Govi thermometer and hydrometer. This is what I use in my greenhouses here to monitor humidity and temperature. I can set alarms if it gets too hot or too cold, too humid, too dry. I do the same for my egg incubators. These are great little devices. I have them all over the place. I already have the Govi app, which I use to run my security lights and my decorative lights. So I can do everything on one app and it'll work great. So you can see here, I have this marked as 1B. So this is Beehive 1. And this will be at the bottom. Then I'll grab my other one here, which is Beehive 1 middle, and then I have Beehive 1 top. And I'll do the same for all three hives here. $10 versus $80. So I, what I need to do, while it's 50 degrees today, I'm going to uh, get down to the bottom hive and insert one of these uh, thermometer hydrometers. So I got my smoker going just to get the bees out of the way. And then I'm just going to uh, open up the two, separate the two center frames, uh, drop this down into the frame, and then push the frames back together, and that will hold everything in place. Let's get to work. Now, the nice thing about these hydrometers and thermometers from Govi, at least the H5100s, is that they work on either Wi Fi or Bluetooth. So if they're close enough to you via Bluetooth, you don't need a hub. Mine are not, they're 100 feet or more away from where I'm sitting in my office. So I got the Gobi with the hub and I just installed it right here in the greenhouse that's just around the corner from where the beehives are. I actually use the greenhouse as a windscreen, windshield from the wind. And then I also have the uh, Deco mesh Wi-Fi network. So I have three of these on my property, two and a half acres. And so I don't have any dead spots in my property for Wi-Fi. So with the combination of the Wi-Fi and the hub, uh, I ha can read my thermometers, hydrometers 24 seven. Your Wi-Fi may be strong enough and you don't need a mesh network Wi-Fi. But if not, you take a look at the decos. Uh, they work really, really well. I've been happy with them for the last couple of years. If uh, you're not within Bluetooth range, get a hub. I'll have a link down below and it'll work great. Lots and lots of bees in here. Super healthy hives. Really happy with them. So I just need to scoot some frames over. Put it in between. haven't needed to smoke them yet and not really in the way now I'll get the one marked 1B for bottom set it right in between the frames here and then let the frame pressure hold them in place so the B minder is nice thin strip but you're paying $80 for that feature so I've just got that right down into the comb 
and now I'll just push the combs back together. Nice and quick. And now we're going to put the, this box back on, do the same thing. These are being really gentle. I have really gentle bees. These are all uh, from swarms I caught and they're the best kind of bees I've ever had. Let's push this in between. Get it down below the wood bar, down to where the comb is. And then that allows me to push the frames back into position. So what I realized is that the hydrometer and temperature uh, opening on the Govi H5100s is on the side. And so I had to come back into each one of these hives, and uh, which I didn't want to do, and that's disturb the hive by pulling out these frames. So it's my mistake, but I want you to see how beautiful this is. Look at that, they just, it's just awesome. They get the honey, they, they've got the, the queen is laying eggs, just perfect, I couldn't ask for better. Um, but anyway, so this is why you watch my videos, so you learn what not to do. So let me make the mistakes, so you don't have to. So I'm gonna pull this sensor out, and you can see there's the, there's the opening right there. That needs to be down. So now I'll just flip it over on its side, put it right back to where it was, if I don't drop it. And of course, this is the most difficult one. I've already replaced all the others. But this will give me really accurate readings. I've already tested this out previously before I installed all these, so I know it works well. I'll show you a screenshot here on the on the app. Let me put these girls back in and button everything back up. So they've been extremely forgiving and easy on me. I'm gonna give them a little smoke so I don't squish them when I'm putting the next box back on. Get them off the edges. There we go. Each of these boxes is easily. 50 pounds easily they got lots of stores in here for winter you may be able to see I've already turned that one on its side now let me show you what I'm going to do for the uh, top brood box I put in the sensor on the bottom brood box the middle brood box now I need to put one on the top brood box All right, got the sensor. There's the side of the there's the side of the sensor that senses. I'll just set this right on top, just like that, and close it up. I'll trim this off here in a second so it's nice and clean. All the sensors are in place. I need to wrap it so that uh, I have no cold temperatures touching the wood, and the bees will be ready for winter. I almost forgot. They have all this comb and honey here uh, that they can use, and I'm just gonna put that right inside of this box so when they break through, they'll have it available for them. There they go. It's a few days after I recorded the original video. I'm in my office where it's nice and warm. And let me go over the some of the details here on this fantastic information you get from these very inexpensive sensors. So this first screen here on the left is when I was doing my testing, making sure that I was getting a reading from the sensor all the way back to my office and to my cell phone. Originally I was not, so I moved the hub from my living room to the sunroom, which helped, but I was getting intermittent signals. Then when I move the hub from my sunroom to my greenhouse, I've gotten 100% good data. 
I'm probably about 150 feet away from the sensors who that are inside of a box that has a metal lid on it. So um, making sure that you have Wi-Fi connection through the hub is important. If you're close enough with Wi-Fi, there's no problem there. But that was my setup. So once I knew that I had a good strong signal and I was getting accurate, consistent readings, that's when I went and started making the video. The second screenshot here, the one in the middle, is after I've installed all nine sensors into the hives. And you can see I've got the hive one and then two and then three and then I have the outside temperature because I want to be able to compare uh, between the two. Then what I did is I kind of organized things so I had beehive one top first and the next was the beehive one middle and the next beehive bottom. Now you may notice on the first screenshot on the left that beehive top has a really low temperature and, to, and then beehive middle has a great temperature. And I love that because what it shows me is that I'm getting a good barrier just with that sugar and the paper on the top brood box and helping insulate the cold from outside. So just underneath that newspaper, it's over 90 degrees. Above it, it's 50. Just that alone makes a big difference. Having that dead air space in there with no ventilation. Again, I'm really emphasizing that I'm not using any top ventilation in this. At this point, the next morning, I had already insulated the complete hives, tops, bottoms, all the way around the sides. And what I found interesting is that, that the hive was so warm all the way out through the hive that it appears that the bees are not clustering. You can see the temperature in the t middle and bottom is about the same. So they're comfortable enough, even so early in the morning, that they're just walking around the hive enjoying the nice warm non-ventilated hive. The next screenshot in the middle shows that I've gone ahead and organized the hive one top, hive one middle, and hive one bottom and done the same to the other two hives. And you may notice the same thing in the other two hives where the temperatures in the middle and bottom are very close and I think that's because there's no chimney effect happening with because I don't have a, a top vent and the hive is completely wrapped with R10 insulation. I'll have that video up posted quickly so make sure you subscribe and like to this channel so you can see how I winterized my hives for the absolute best healthiest solution for my bees. Uh, a lot of people say they they do it differently and the bees make it through the winter and I'm very very excited for them. I want my bees to thrive through winter. If my bees can live longer and be healthier and come into spring stronger because they have a nice, warm, non-vented hive, then that's what I'm all about. Make sure you subscribe and like to this channel. Comments are always appreciated. Let us know what you're doing in your hives to monitor temperature and humidity. But uh, if you subscribe and like, you, especially if you mark that bell button so it's black, you'll get updates as I post new updates on the hives and how these sensors are working through the winter. One question I have, will the batteries last all winter? Another question is, will we actually be able to see the bees migrate from the top, middle, bottom, and so throughout the hive? Are we going to be able to see clustering? And you may especially be interested in seeing when I'm using the flexible bore scope camera inside the hive throughout winter. Well, we're not only being able to see the temperature through these sensors here, but actually see the bees inside the hive and how they're moving around. Should be some great videos to watch and enjoy and learn from. I'll have links down below to the Govi H5100 sensors that I'm using. And please let me know if you decide to use those in your hive. Love to find out how that works for you. This is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, reminding you, if you are prepared with proper temperature and humidity sensors, top, middle, and bottom in your hives, you shall not fear not knowing what's going in your hives and whether your hives are not healthy and warm.